he came in and we were told he had a, a few days to live. And then I think it was probably the next day you rang me and said, um, he's not going to make it to your sister's wedding. So you said, let's do a blessing. I mean, that was just amazing. It was beautiful. And I have to say that, you know, that morning he felt really, really sick and he still wasn't convinced that he'd get here. And, you know, he was wheeled through and I don't know, there was just something really amazing about it. It was a lovely day, wasn't it? It was. The, the dog as the ring bearer as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. And um, you'd all decorated out the little canteen area. Um, I know you'd thought about doing it in this chapel, but obviously his bed wouldn't have got yeah. in here. I mean, he was tired by the end, yes. but he was able to, you know, have his glass of champagne and um, just be part of it. And he was supposed to have been the witness at her actual wedding. And so we'd done up a a certificate yes. which I'd pass through you to make sure that you know we weren't breaching any conventions yes, yes. Right. so that he could sign something basically to say that he'd witnessed the blessing yes and uh, I think that meant a lot to him being able to do that the whole team here was so supportive um, you know whether it was chaplaincy department or the nurses or yes. whatever it still came through as a very giving environment I know dad felt supported by you the whole way through one of your volunteer chaplains you know, would come and sit with him and pray with him at times. Yes. And I got the phone call to yes. say he'd passed away. And I just think he was holding on. It was a happy day in, in what could have been very sad. Yes. And uh, yeah, just so special. Bernie was diagnosed with lung cancer and um, it, it had progressed. The nurses recommended he come here to the hospice. Um, and he didn't want to at first, you know, he was frightened, but um, after sort of having been here for a while, he um, realised that um, it was a nice place to be. We help people face it, and not only face the, the loved one's death, but there's another journey to be had as well, and that's to, to get you through the bereavement journey. And, mm. how, and we, are we say however long that takes. Yes. You know, I don't go to church every week, and, and um, it, but that hasn't made a difference to the help that you've, that you've given me. Whatever was going on, we can meet you where you're at. And um, you know, our chaplaincy mantra is meet people where they're at and just love them. Mm. So that's what mm. we do. The care didn't stop. I had other things going on in my life, and um, you, you know, saw me through all of that. It's been over a year now, and, and you know, I'm still being supported. And um, you know, I, I honestly don't think I could have done it without your help.